happened? Darling, why are you here? Why aren't you in Willow Lake? You're supposed to be on vacation. Oh, oh not another troubled love affair, is it? Oh, Brooke, look at that. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, well, another, um, uh, I'm sorry gift, hmm? Well, Brooke, you could at least say something. Thank you for last night. It was very special to me. Adam? Adam? Oh, Brooke, you've not taken that monster back, have you? Brooke, after all he put you through, surely you wouldn't take him back. Aunt Phoebe, why are you always so quick to jump to conclusions? Not so quick, darling. Those flowers and that sentimental note. I have no intention of taking Adam back. Uh, you obviously spent time with him last night. Don't you have a column to write? And why are you here and not at Willow Lake? Because I choose to be here now. Is that all? No, it is not all. Uh, young lady, I am not only your adoring aunt. I also happen to be a professional advisor when it comes to matters of the heart. But your advice wasn't solicited, was it? Be that as it may, I am an expert in spotting troubled people. And you happen to be a very troubled woman. I would love to make you happy and tell you that that was true, but it's not. I'm very content with things the way they are, believe me. Come in. Oh, he's rather overdoing it, isn't he? Thank you. Um, the secretary will take care of you on the way out. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my. Well, my dear. What does the message say this time? Sydney. Last night was memorable. Hope we can do it again soon, Jackson. Jack. Brooke, T two men in one night? Really? That's not bad for somebody who's been on the circulation for a while, is it? Darling, have you no shame? None whatsoever. You know what? Quite to the contrary. I'm very flattered. But, but it's so... So what? A, a flagrant. Well, not if you look at it in the right light. I'm trying to. That's good. But I just... I'm a grown I... woman, Aunt Phoebe. I don't answer to you or to anybody else. Oh, I can't believe this. You're reverting to your youth. My hell-raising youth, you mean? Yes. Why, darling, there was a time when you were pursuing or being pursued by practically every young man in town. Oh, you gave your Uncle Charles and me more gray hairs than I would care to count. Mm -hmm, but I turned out okay, didn't I? Oh, you turned out recently. Oh, but sweetheart, I hate to see you go through all of that again. I mean, sure, you, you covered your hurt with bravado, but there were times you were really deeply hurt. You needed love and attention, something you never had as a child, but... Oh, sweetheart, I don't want you to be vulnerable like that again. I mean, you're opening all of those wounds. It's just not worth it. Aunt Phoebe, I've developed a very thick skin since then, and I will not get hurt. I'm only interested in the icing at this point, not the whole cake. That's the best part anyway. Oh, I shudder for you. Stop worrying, all right? I'm a survivor, and right now I am back from no vacation. I have a ton of work. And I believe you have your work cut out for you as well, is that but, true? Darling, I care about you. I know you do. And I love you for it. Oh. Hmm? There's the door. Uh, but, uh, bro... Uh. All right. Stay away from my wife. Well, Dixie's your wife. I'm warning you. What are you warning me about, Adam? You have no claim on Brooke. She divorced you. It's a good thing, too. Or on top of everything else, we'd be able to charge you with bigamy. Yeah, you're very clever. But here's something you don't know. Last night, after your so-called date with Brooke, she spent the rest of the evening with me. <laughs> well, bully for you. At Willow Lake Cabin. Willow Lake has a very special significance to Brooke and me. Ah, I see. And that's why you think she picked that for her vacation spot, huh? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Well, let me just clear this up for you, Adam. The reason she picked that for her vacation spot was because she wanted to be alone. That's why she didn't tell you, although I see you managed to ferret it out. We talked for a long time, hours, about us, about our life, our past life together. We became very close, Jackson. Closer than we've been for a long time. Please, please, you're breaking my heart. For I well up with crocodile tears, and also because it's safe to tell you. Let me tell you the reason that Brooke really spent that time with you. She was trying to keep you away from that cabin, Adam, because that's where Dixie was hiding out. 
a lie. No, it's not a lie. Believe me, I've been in constant touch with Dixie. Brooke was just a decoy. Oh, take your time, Adam. I'm sure they're long gone by now. I didn't feel obligated to tell you. You knew how frantic I was to find her. I knew that you also had every option at your command to, to do that. And they'd all come up empty-handed. Brooke, to spend the entire evening knowing? Why, Brooke? I don't want to hurt Dixie. I want to help her. Help her how? By getting her the psychiatric care that she needs. Adam, you know, I'm not a shrink. Uh, but Dixie seemed perfectly sane to me. Oh. Did Dixie happen to mention some of the things she did while I was in Singapore? What things do you mean? She could have killed our son. How? By putting detergent in the baby's formula. If Stuart hadn't seen her do it and, and, and alerted Mrs. Bancroft, and then she, she shredded the whole wardrobe of the child's clothing with scissors. The scissors were found under her pillow. I don't understand why she couldn't have been treated on an outpatient basis. You didn't have to have her committed, did you? Brooke, I didn't have her committed. She did it herself, voluntarily. Well, so then that would indicate, at least at that point, that she was sinking somewhat clearly. Why are you taking her side against me I'm not in this? taking anybody's side. I'm just going on by what you're telling me. That your indications is that, you know, her prime concern was protecting the child. And by what she told me about, about the treatment that she received at the, at the institution. She was, she was ref refusing to be helped. She was becoming a danger to herself as well as to others. Adam, are you sure that you weren't doing something that was contributing to... Brooke, all I was doing was being encouraging. I was loving, I was, I was patient, I was understanding. But when my son's life became endangered, no. Tad told me that Dixie was never insane. Tad would say anything to hurt me. He hates my guts. Ted Martin is using this mental breakdown to try to get her away from me. He probably thinks I'm going to make some, some enormous settlement on her, and he can cash in on it. A settlement on her? Why? Well, but, I mean, in, in case things don't work out, in, ca in case she can't cope. You mean in case she wasn't able to raise her child? Yes, he, I mean, he's my prime concern, of course. He's a helpless little infant. Adam, I really don't know what to think. Brooke, I'm telling you the truth. I have a lot of work I need to get done. All I'm asking is that you keep an open mind about it. Yes. Well, that's my training as a journalist. Just please remember what I've said. Think about it. Thank you.